Welcome to the Networking with Michelle podcast, the show dedicated to providing you with life strategies with a little bit of entrepreneur advice. Here we believe in the Jim Rohn quote, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Hey, good people. Welcome back to the Networking with Michelle. I have a my good friend, Jane, from HBLI, class two here, representing. Say something for the people. Hello. How are you, everyone? <laughs> She's not that sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have my new friend, Linda, here. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining me on this show. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be nothing but laughter for the next 30 minutes. So prepare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, seriously, we're here. We're sitting down uh, for a good reason. So why don't y'all tell the listeners what's going on? So on September the 29th, we will be having our second annual Nigeria Cultural Parade. So it's taking place in downtown Houston. And we are here to hopefully promote that and make sure that everyone gets the chance to come out. Last year was fun and we expect this year to be even bigger and better. Okay. So before we dive into the details of the parade, Jane, why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself? So my name is Jane Udoa, and I guess I met Michelle through HBLI, who's now become my friend slash prayer partner. Um, so I'm an IT professional, but I have a heart for Africa. So I started a company called Culturally Niger which focuses on basically um, preserving the culture of Nigerians amongst people like myself, Nigerian Americans who maybe don't know how to cook the food or speak the languages. So then I had an idea. I made a vision board where I said, this year I'm going to do one of these three things. It was write a script, travel to Nigeria or do a parade. So, um, I went to my dear friend, Linda. I said, hey, this is my idea. And she was like, cool. So she we she helped me run with it. And now we work together on this awesome event. Wow. All right. Linda, what about yourself? Well, I'm Linda Nukwam, um, founder of We Lead, I'm also geared towards um, supporting Africa more so with economic development and um I don't know, over the years, I've, I've met Jane through other organizations where we actually participated together um, running the executive board team. Okay. So, so with this project of the Nigeria Parade, I mean, it just became another additional easy process for us because we pretty much have worked together um, in the past. Got it. So what is the concept of preserving the culture of Nigeria because on the outside looking in it seems like Nigeria Nigeria and Nigerians is a dominant force yeah so within Africa Nigerian is known as the, the giant of Africa so preserving the culture meaning n- n- there are certain things that we do but why do we do it like some cultures maybe you have to kneel down before you greet someone why Or why don't we use our left hand to eat? So things like that, not just doing things because that's how we've always done it, but understanding the culture and why those those customs came about. So you say you were going to take a trip to Nigeria? That's what I wanted to do. So (laughs) have you been? Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. yeah. I told myself I would go every year. Oh, wow. Been five years since. So, okay. I mean, <laughs> so, like, so you know, at the beginning of the year, I yeah, set yeah. out my goals, and I was like, I'm okay. either gonna go there because it's been too long. It's been way too long. Gotcha. I go back, but um, that didn't happen. So it didn't. takes a lot of money to go to Nigeria. Listen, and you can't, run, you, run can't, you can't go empty-handed when you go to Nigeria either, and, and so. still yeah. maintain this luxury house that I'm sitting in. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do think that's important, though. I think I have I've only been to Cameroon once, um, but I really haven't had the desire to go back. Yeah. Why? Um, well, why? Because the, the I say the two recent times, my mom's gone twice in the past five years, this year and in 2013 for deaths. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like 
you know, let's go just to go type of thing. Um, but I think more so just haven't been financially sound to even take that initiative to go. I understand. Uh, and then my uncle, he lived in Johannesburg. So I really wanted to go to South Africa first, but he's the uncle that passed away this mm. year. And then that was a whole thing to take him from South Africa to Cameroon and start that process, you know, when our loved ones pass away. But um, it's interesting because, you know, people assume I'm Nigerian. And then I'm like, you know, there's like 50 other countries in Africa. <laughs> well, you in Houston, which. But even in Atlanta. And that's Irish. why I say y'all are the like the dominant force. So would it like, you know. I understand it now, but when it comes to preserving the culture in Nigeria, I think most people just assume everyone, every African is Nigerian. It's true. <laughs> so, yeah, so I agree with you. The numbers are high, but mm. as far as cultural awareness, mm. I think it is missing, particularly like in Houston, when it mm-hmm. comes to even just Africa as a whole, because we see the Greek festival that oh. takes place. Um, what's yeah. another festival that takes place? The Caribbean festival. Yeah, so that was more of the idea, that cultural yeah. exchange and awareness that, yes, Nigerians are definitely dominant in numbers. They definitely appear as a force, mm-hmm. but to be able to showcase the cultural aspect of it is missing. Um, well, how do you feel about, I guess you have artists... Uh, I would say Wale is the first person that comes to mind. And I know there's other mainstream artists. Uh, Mm -hmm. The movie Black Panther, everyone's claiming Wakanda forever. And like I know back in my day when I was growing up, if you were African. It was tough. (laughs) tough. (laughs) So do you think some of these mainstream um, things are helping with the cultural awareness? Yes, more so in a positive direction. Okay, okay. Because I think, um, particularly in the U.S., because I mm-hmm. feel like the outside, outside of the country, they embrace mm-hmm. cultures um, or international cultures very easily and more so positive. Like they have more of an open mind. But here in the U.S., especially the time frame, you know, mm-hmm. we've all gone through, um, it was perceived very negative. Um the movie what um, Wakanda did, or I'm sorry, look at I called it yeah, Wakanda. Black Panther. Black Panther did open the door to this embracing of Africa. Mm-hmm. So now it's a, a trend mm-hmm. yeah. at this point. That's it's a trend. What we're worried about will the, is it a trend? Mm-hmm. Is it a fad? Will yeah. it go away? But hopefully, that interest in the culture can stay. You know, everyone's wearing dashikis now and stuff. What's going to happen in 10 years? Well, I guess, okay, so you mentioned dashikis. Do Nigerians wear dashikis? No. That's what East Africa, right? I think so, yeah. So they're like, that's the problem I have with people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they, 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 they put it on the whole continent. Yes. yes. It's just like... And I'm like, you're not down. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not, like, I'm sorry, but your ignorance... You're ignorant. It's like you're trying to be down, but you're ignorant yeah. to what you're trying to embrace. And I, cause I remember one time several years ago, I wanted to grow dreads because I'm thinking it would be cool. And my friend was like, Michelle, you can't grow dreads. Like that's the whole culture behind the dreads. Yeah. And then I looked into it. And I was like, ah, oh, I get it. So I, like I've never grown dreads because of that. Understood. But I, I get it, um, especially when you talk about the ignorance part, because Delta did it one time when mm-hmm. Ghana made it to the World Cup mm-hmm. and to highlight the two teams, they highlighted Delta with the picture of the giraffe. Mm-hmm. And so Ghana or the people of Ghana mm-hmm. attacked them on social media saying that just because giraffes are in Africa does not mean that they're in Ghana. Because, mm. you know... So I take it giraffes are not in Ghana. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in Kenya. Yeah. I think it's Kenya. Yeah. You know, the safari. Yeah, the safari. So, yeah. <laughs> See, and that's why the parade helped. 
because let us you yeah. you know it's it can be used as an educational yeah. tool. That's yeah. why I say I always look at it as a cultural exchange. Yeah, so that's why we want everyone to come out, no matter your race or your culture. We invite people from all walks of life to come and learn. So, what is the first? I mean, of course, there's the parade, but what do you think are some key elements that someone needs? Like, how can we become more open minded? I guess, like even for myself, I'm mean, from Cameroon. <laughs> How can they become more open-minded? I mean, the 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 first step is to basically show up. Mm-hmm. At least listen, hear, taste the food. Um, you know, David O said it best to me at the BET Awards. He said, mm, "Come yeah, to Africa, yeah, yeah. wear the clothes." <clears throat> eat the food. I mean, that's the only way you could be a little, you know, become open-minded. Um, yeah. So what was the inspiration for the parade? Last year was 2017. So did it start in 2017 or 2016? Started in 2017. Okay. Yes. But the planning 2016. 2016. Yes. So I guess part of the inspiration was, uh, so the parade is in honor of Nigerian independence day, which is October 1st. So this year will be Nigeria's 58th year of independence. So every October 1st around the city of Houston, you see multiple events. Like there could be 10 different events going on. Um, around the city. So one of the driving factors was why can't we come together and have a bigger, larger event all together instead Mm -hmm. of every organization doing their own. So that's one of the main keys behind the parade is unifying the community, the Nigerian community here in Houston. And then the second one, definitely um, cultural because um, when Jane came up with the idea, it was still named Nigerian Independence Parade. Mm -hmm. And we kind of received a huge backlash and had to to go back and regroup, you know, um, and came up with Nigeria Culture Parade because now Nigeria Culture Parade can just stand, withstand withstand time now versus in the the independence. Well, because the end, I think it was just more so last year, the Mm -hmm. climate in Nigeria was very Mm -hmm. sensitive. Mm -hmm. Um, There were things going on that were bringing up factors that that led to the Civil War Mm -hmm. right after Nigerian independence. Yeah, okay. right after Nigeria was declared independent, you know, Nigeria experienced the Civil War. So some things, some some events took place in 2016 that led to that. I don't know, bringing up old wounds and mm-hmm. carried over into 2017. Gotcha. So when he, some people, some of the community in Houston, when they heard the title Nigerian Independence Parade, they said that they were not coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was that more so from the Nigerians older or younger oh older most definitely mm-hmm. older it came from well, we heard it from some oh young I'm sorry older. yeah young too. it came from both from really? both yeah yeah I think the younger didn't really understand they were kind of just jumping on the bandwagon mm-hmm. I could be wrong but that's what I felt hmm interesting yeah so that's how Nigeria Culture Parade was birthed. And we believe that, you know, it suits better too. Much better. It's helped so much in raising funds, you know, when you say cultural events. Versus independent. That makes sense. I can see that. So what can people expect um, if they come out to this family friendly event? A good time. You will have a good time. You will be able to watch the parade lineup, see different organizations come through, show their culture through singing, dancing. Um, and then after the parade, you'll be able to head over to the park and you the fun will continue with music, food, and games. So an all-around good, family-friendly, fun event. From what time? So the parade starts at not 10 a.m., sorry. 
at 10 a.m. You will be able to see the parade and then the festival will last till about three-ish, two-ish, three-ish. They begin simultaneously. Okay. I missed the parade last year. You came late. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I saw the, uh, the park set up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they said they start off simultaneously and the park set up this year will be a bit more detailed. Um, you, this year is Wysobia. They're providing free food this year versus food being sold last year. Okay. And then we want to bring in vendors that also showcase Again, the Nigerian culture, where it's through beads, fabric, cloth. And then, of course, our professional vendors who want to um, patronize the attendees with financial education or financial literacy. Um, Maybe there may be a couple of vendors um, in regards to health Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, as well. But as she mentioned, you know, even with the different organization groups, we also have to keep in mind that Nigeria has, what, 200 tribes, 300 languages. So even within those organizations, you're you're witnessing groups from the Yoruba tribe, from the Igbo tribe, from the Hausa tribe. Um, Ibibio tribe. So, and speaking of tribes, it's funny how you mentioned people think you're Nigerian. Within Nigerian, the different tribes, everyone always assumes I'm Igbo. Mm-hmm. So I get I get that stereotyping as well. Yeah. As if there's only two tribes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's just interesting to say it nicely. I do have a question for both of y'all. <laughs> First gen, are you, were you born here? Yes. Okay. Were you born here? Yes. Okay. So I guess what's the difference between, some people say first generation, some people say second generation. Yes. I'm first. You're first, right? Yeah, yeah. but some people call, say we're actually second. Or being born here? Yes. I spoke to some professors <laughs> at some of the universities, and I guess, I don't know, technically they say we're second generation, but I call myself first. Okay. So we agree that we're first generation. Nigeria, Cameroon. All right, cool. So with that being said, how do you identify as far as African-American, Black American, Nigerian American? How do you identify? It's interesting you say that. I actually put Nigerian American, especially when it allows you to write it. Um, in most cases, when it's just the generic format, I do choose African American. Mm-hmm. But there are some forms it allows you to write in. I want to say even when you travel, mm-hmm. filling out that form online, I feel like Nigerian yeah. American. Yeah. Yeah. What about yourself, Jane. I I agree. I I'll call myself Nigerian before American. I guess it's just from growing up. It's funny because in the black culture you don't fit in, you're African, then you go to your Nigerian culture and then you don't fit in. You're not mm-hmm. Nigerian enough. And they call you Americano or Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's hard. You don't fit in in Why either they call culture. You a Yankee though? Like we're in the South. Like that's Yankee just what they because call. when they look at US, New, New York, York is the symbol. <laughs> that's what I'm like, we're not Again, North. We're not North. That's where everybody but goes. See, yeah. I think yeah. the niggas on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. That makes you sense. know, when it relates to Africa, there's something Especially that coming to, to coming US. To America. <laughs> there you go. My favorite movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you <we> go. <laughs> no, I agree. And I think just last year, either everything's happening so fast. Either last year or this year, I've started identifying myself as a Cameroon American. And I'm like, what took me so long? Like, I always known about the struggle because it's like not African enough, not black enough. Um, but it's just now I'm like Cameroon American. And it's funny because I think people have kind of, it's been a conversation starter. It's like, Oh, like you're different. And I'm like, yes, I need to be identified. <laughs> and, I'm, and I need to be separate from some of the chaos that mm-hmm. comes, that comes along with this crazy society. All right, so what am I missing before we wrap up? I know you've been trying to get on the show forever. Yes, I've been <laughs> trying. 
<laughs> but I'm so blessed and honored to finally be on the show. And I know you're doing great things and both of us are doing things. So I'm sure we'll be back. Of course. Yeah. So we want you to check out our website at www.nigeriaculturalparade.com. You can see footage from the parade last year. Um, there are links for participation if you want to actually be in the parade or if you want to volunteer in the parade or if you want to sponsor the parade. All that information is on our website. In addition to vendor opportunities or if you would like to even place an advert okay. into our program brochure or program souvenir that would be passed out um, to the attendees. Okay. And one more time, this is September 29th, Saturday. Saturday. Yep. September 29th. Near the Toyota Center. Yes, downtown Houston from 10 a.m. The parade will be 10 to 12 on time. Okay. Not on C- time? Not, a- <laughs> not African time, not CPT time, American but you, time. But you can start coming down as early as 9 a.m. Yep, to get your spot, there'll be music playing. And it's free. And free. it's free. Free. No free. Cost. free food, too. Sponsored Ooh. by Wysopia. So we have to give our sponsor a shout out. <laughs> If you if you are a parent and you don't know what to do with these kids on a Saturday, wake them up, give them some breakfast, come downtown. They're going to be entertained. They're going to be fed. They're going to have enough room to play around and meet other kids. Get educated. Going to bring some awareness to them? Nah, but this is awesome. Uh, Jane, you know, I like to give you a hard time, but I'm proud of you. Always, always very, very, very proud of you. Uh, I know this is a major task and it's not easy, so I commend you. Commend you both. So, with that being said, y'all make sure y'all go to the website, nigeriaculturalparade.com. I will have the link in the show notes. Follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram, Nigeria okay. Cultural Parade. Okay. We'll put that in the show notes too. So remember, I believe in you and a personal connection leads to an influential network. So thanks for networking with Michelle.